Hey, this is Tom Nash, and I want to raise a few questions for my viewers. We hear a lot about what's going on right now in Gaza. We're hearing a lot about what's going on with the Palestinian people. And obviously, war is horrible. There's a lot of suffering in war. And it's a horrendous situation. We all can agree to that, right? But there's a few things that I think any independent thinker should take into account formulating their opinion about what's going on right now in the Middle East. You see, there's a lot of chatter about how uh, Gaza used to be this open-air prison where people were basically um, held inside like uh, cattle almost uh, in this inhumane conditions and absolutely horrendous situation, right? And I'm not saying that Gaza was, uh, you know, a resort. I'm not saying that Gaza was the best place on earth to live in. However, we have all this footage right now circulating on, on social media, uh, especially on TikTok and other platforms, showing how beautiful life in Gaza were before the uh, Israel invasion, showing us the jet skis, the beautiful homes, all the restaurants, the cafes, the, the boulevards, all the beautiful life, uh, the beautiful markets. And uh, I think it's beautiful. And for me, as an independent thinker, there's a little bit of a problem here, guys. Either we're going to talk about Gaza being an open-air prison, and then that open-air prison became a war zone, or we're talking about this beautiful place on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, who's become a war zone. Uh, you can't have both, as the Palestinian argument has to make sense. And it doesn't make sense to me to claim that, on the one hand, it was an open-air prison. On the other hand, look at how the Israelis have ruined this beautiful place that was so perfect and so, you know, inviting and so beautiful. And look, obviously, life in Gaza were not simple. Of course, we have that Israeli blockade that prevented the Gazans from developing a proper, you know, economy and a lot of smuggling happened. But on the other hand, you know, the Israelis have been saying for years, look, We've created this blockade because, you know, the Palestinians, they bring in guns and they threaten our security. And what happened on October 7th, unfortunately, kind of proves the Israelis' point, which was, guys, we had this blockade because we we're trying to prevent you from, you know, bringing guns. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, coming in and murdering us, which is kind of, no, what happened on October 7th. So was the blockade justified? I think October 7th actually logically makes me believe that the blockade actually was justified. But nevertheless, it seemed like the Palestinians were able to sustain some sort of a viable, you know, uh, environment where they could live and interact and they had culture and they had, you know, commerce and whatnot. From what I see on social media, from the, you know, I've seen Mercedes, I've seen BMW, I've seen beautiful homes. So it doesn't compute, guys. The other part where I want you to be critical in your thinking process is the amount of victims uh, in, in Gaza. And I'm sure there's a lot of innocent victims in war. I'm sure of that. I mean, war is horrendous. Historically speaking, uh, whenever, you know, militaries had to fight in an urban warfare environment, uh, the kill-death ratio of, of uh, actual combatants to civilians is nine to one. So, you know, you have nine civilians dead for every dead soldier or dead combatant. It's a horrible situation. You know, wars should not be fought uh, in the middle of, of a housing project, obviously. Now, that being said, we're hearing about the death toll from Gaza, and we hear the word genocide being thrown around, and I think that word is being used a little bit too lightly, and I'll explain why. And I'm going to get some hate for that, and that's fine. There's two million people that were in Gaza for a long, long time. If the Israelis really wanted or really had a vicious kind of agenda of, you know, genocidal intent on killing as many Palestinians as possible, you know, I have all these people in this urban warfare kind of environment, they could have dropped a few bombs and killed a hell of a lot more than 30,000 people. When I look at the numbers, we have 2 million people and after months of intense fighting, we have 30,000 dead. So a genocidal uh, nation with almost a uh, complete dominance, air force dominance, uh, vast, massive amounts of bombs. So it doesn't compute. Where's the genocidal acts here? Because if they actually had intent on killing as many civilians as possible, I don't think it would have been that hard in Gaza for, for Israel with all their air superiority and whatnot. The other part which I have a problem is, look, if you look at the death toll right now, and it's horrible, I'm sure a lot of innocent people died. Looking at the death toll, I'm confused. Because I'm seeing there's 30 or 40,000 uh, deaths, and it's horrible. A lot of them are children. It's horrible. But uh, the Gaza uh, Ministry of Health, which is uh, operated by Hamas, uh, has not reported any Hamas casualties. So, uh, so far, since the beginning of the war, there's zero Hamas members reported dead. Uh, so, only civilians, 100% casualties, civilians, no Hamas dead, no natural deaths whatsoever. And on top of it all, if you kind of think about it, 
the way the numbers come out, they come out in a very linear fashion. So every day, there's almost this uh, uh, linear 45 degree angle of increase in the amount of deaths. So to me, again, I'm sure there's a lot of horrendous things that are going on in the war zone. But to me, these numbers, because they come through Hamas and they look a little bit iffy and there's no natural deaths, there's no Hamas dead, it's only civilians. I don't know. Now, I'm not saying anything. I'm not I'm making any arguments. I'm going to let you guys decide. But I want to bring up these two points because I keep seeing them on social media and I want to challenge them. So you guys can think for yourself. You can make your own conclusions. And I want to hear in the comments what you guys have to think. If, maybe you disagree with me. And that's fine. Maybe you agree with me. That's fine also. Let me know what you guys think and how you can settle this kind of uh, dissonance that I have with this story. I'll see you in the next one.